it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. The fan. Pass him on the left. Step on it. Now pass him on the right. Look out for the wall. Hit the brakes. Why didn't you hit the brakes? He was just too scared. What do you mean too scared? Something got into my eyes. Those were your hands. My turn. Let me show you how it's really done. Oh, what's wrong with the computer? Oh, it's been really acting up for a while. It turns off by itself. It's no big deal. I just turn it back on. I don't like this at all. Come on, Nolik. Let's go inside and take a look. Just like people, machines can get sick, too. They can get a very high temperature and even start coughing and sneezing. And if a machine or an appliance gets seriously sick, sometimes it can be too late to fix them at all. So wouldn't it be better if we could keep them from getting sick in the first place? Everybody knows that people who look after their health get sick less often and live longer. And the same goes for machines. Machines break less often and live longer if they're properly taken care of. That's why machines need to be checked from time to time and cleaned and oiled. And that's what's called preventive maintenance. And preventive maintenance is something that always should be kept in mind by humans and by fixies. Oh, what is that? What is what? Can you hear that? What are all those sounds? It's probably just mm, a fixie eater that woke up. What? What do you mean, fixie eater? Didn't you know that inside of some appliances there live horrible monsters? They love to attack fixies and eat them up. And the smaller the fixies are, the more the fixie eater likes to eat them. Ha <laughs> ha! And how come you never told me anything about fixie eaters before? I didn't want you to get <laughs> All right, scaredy cat, let's keep going. looks like nothing more than a simple little engine with a propeller, the computer couldn't work without it. It has the very important job of keeping all of those other parts cool when they start heating up. It cools down the inside of a computer by blowing a stream of air. But if the fan gets dirty and starts working poorly, the computer might get overheated and turn off. Or it can simply break. You have to turn off your computer. How come? I'll tell you later. That part's done. Now we oil it. Let me try. All right. It's oiled up. <laughs> Just like your nose. Tom, Tom! Turn it on! Tideesh! And then suddenly, I hear this terrible roar of a fixie eater. 
But I wasn't scared one little bit. And I just ran right into the battle. And Simka? Oh, she was hiding somewhere. You know, she's a girl and they're all cowards. So I had to fight the monster all by myself. Ah! Oh, I guess that was an example of how girls hide like cowards when they're too scared. <laughs> well, um, yeah. The vent. Tom Thomas. Tom Thomas. Okay. Simka, Tula, check it out. It's pretty, isn't it? Oh, splendid. It's nothing but a trinket. It's completely useless. Useless? Look how well it matches my hair clip. Useful things are the kinds of things you truly need. For instance, like this rope ladder I've got. It's splendid. And where do you plan on climbing with this thing? Now this mirror here is both useful and pretty. Oh, how splendid. Tula, you say everything is splendid. Well, here's something super splendid that I bet you don't have. Oh, what is it? It's a mechanical super claw. It must be just perfect for scratching your back. <laughs> now look what I have. A photograph of Vector. And he signed it for me, too. Are you sure that's Vector? You've got a photo of the bravest fixie on the face of the entire planet? Yeah, and the most beautiful. Is it him for sure? No way. Let me take a look. Uh-uh. You'll smudge it. You've been fooled. No. Yes. Jealous. You are. <gasps> Ah! My photo! Oh, no! What was that? Uh, a draft. This is completely your fault. It's not my fault. It's your fault for bragging so much. Please, girls, stop fighting. Let's go find it. To lose a picture signed by the most famous fixie ever. It will be horrible when that picture of a fixie is found by humans. So where could it be? <gasps> I know how we can find it. Exactly. We'll blow a bubble and watch which way it goes as it floats away. We'll follow it and find your picture. Do you know why you can blow bubbles out of soapy water? At the surface of any liquid, there's an invisible film that is very thin but very strong. If you want to see it for yourself, fill up a glass with water all the way to the very top. Now you need to take a coin and carefully drop it into the water sideways. Then drop in another coin, and another, and another. You'll see that the water doesn't pour out but rises up and forms a hump. That's because the water at the top sticks together. Why? Because of a force called surface tension. Thanks to surface tension, water can form drops. It also helps us blow soap bubbles. Because when we add soap into the water, the film gets even stronger. But still not strong enough to stop the bubbles from bursting. <laughs> okay, it's ready. Now we need to blow. <gasps> Do it together. And... <gasps> It's gonna work. Look, it's flying! I did it! The vent! Of course! Why didn't I think of that before? Have you ever seen holes in the bathroom or kitchen that are covered with grids? Well, those are called vents. And behind the vent is a long pipe called an air duct. 
unpleasant odors and musty air can be forced into the ducts and sent out of the house. And if you want that old, stale air to leave the house even faster, open a window and let in some of the fresh air from outside. Keep the air in your home as fresh as it can be. Hey, take a look! It got stuck over there! Get it before it flies away! How can we grab it? What do you mean? Don't you remember what I've got? Tish! Thank you, Simka. What would we ever have done without your mechanical claw? And your fantastic ladder. Then here you go. A present for you. Oh, thanks. It's just great. And I want to give you this. Oh, gee. It's just splendid. Simka, are you here? Huh. What you got there, Simka? A little mirror. It's pretty, don't you think? Oh, you girls. <laughs> You're all the same. Can you believe that pixies are such itty bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. The thermometer. I can't believe the new thermometer isn't working. Tom Thomas, stay in bed. And I'll try and look for that old mercury thermometer. Hey, did you get sick? That's one way of saying it. I don't know how I'm going to pass that math test today. You're not ready, so you don't want to go to school. Well, yeah. So if you pull a sickie, then you can trick your mom. No, that's not true. I'm just pretending a little bit. You think so? Well, you won't trick the thermometer. Simka, what's a mercury thermometer? Mercury is a type of liquid metal that's silver in color. There's no mercury inside of new thermometers. Now they're electronic. Old thermometers were made with a glass tube with markings and a bit of mercury inside them. When the end of the tube warms up, the mercury inside of it expands and creeps up the tube. And that's how those old thermometers measure temperature. The longer the column of mercury, the higher the person's temperature is. That means I need to warm up the end of the thermometer. Tom Thomas, you're a genius! But how will you warm it up? Finally, I found it. Well, let's see. Mom, can I eat something? <coughs> Hang in there, sweetie. I'll make you something. Ooh, that is hot. Now there's just no way it won't have a temperature. Hey, what are you doing in here? Well, how high did you get it? 108 is what it's showing. Oh, no. If the temperature that high, they'll send you straight to the hospital. And you don't need that. You'd better shake that thermometer. Yeah, that's what I'll do. That'll get the temperature down a little. Ah! Well, so much for that. Cheaters never prosper. Tom Thomas, did you see this? Nola, don't touch the mercury. It's poisonous. Stop it right now. And you, Tom Thomas, you don't touch that mercury either. It's dangerous. Then how can we throw it out? Call your mom and she can help you. I can't. How could I call her? Then she'd find out that I wanted to trick her. Maybe it's better to tell the truth. I can't. I can't do it. All right, then. It looks like there's no other choice. Nolik, call Papus and Masia. I'll get him. And you go back to your room and wait. Looks 
like this whole job is done. Not yet. We still need to neutralize this mercury. In everybody's home, there's all sorts of chemicals around. They are used for cleaning dishes, clothes, the bathroom, and dealing with pests. And all of these substances can be very harmful to human health. But some people don't seem to understand this. They might use a dangerous spray or a poisonous liquid and then forget to wash their hands afterward. And then they go and eat or rub their eyes with their hands. That can cause serious damage to their vision or stomachs. Ah. And never put anything into your mouth that looks like medicine, unless your parents or a doctor gave it to you. And if you ever happen to find something on the ground that looks like a piece of candy, you must never put it in your mouth. You can get poisoned that way. Oh, humans. If they'd only remember this simple advice, they'd stay safer. And what do we do with the glass that's broken? That job's not for fixies. Hmm. Tom Thomas, we cleaned up all the mercury. And the glass, too? No, not the broken glass. But will you? Papu said that it's not our job. He told us you have to get your parents to come and help you. That part's your responsibility. Here's some food for you. What's the matter? Hmm? Mom, I... I broke the thermometer. Broke it? Did you cut yourself? No. The mercury, did you touch it? I didn't. Simka, you think you'll tell her the truth? And where did you break it? The bathroom. Why did you go in there? I wanted... I wanted to trick you. I have a test, and I didn't study for it. And now it's too late for school, hmm? They need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. The pack a mat. Uh, Simka. Can I have the pack mat I'd like to practice with it a little before the exam. Take it! <laughs> hmm? You're really good with that thing. Good. I couldn't be any worse with it. I wanted a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Actually, you were pretty close there. You did manage to get the hose, at least. <laughs> this is not at all funny. In order to get a tool out of a pack mat a fixie must not only press the button on his chest, but he must also clearly picture exactly the tool he needs. By the time they are adults, this is easy for fixies to do. But while they're children, they must study hard to master this important skill. As fixies learn about new tools, they take exams to prove they know how they work. And if they pass an exam, the new tool is added to their pack of mats and there's no end to what you can find inside. Screwdrivers, hammers, ladders, vacuums, and even soldering irons. But many of the tools that fixies use look quite different from the ones that humans have. And the reason for this is very simple. It's because fixies have to fix appliances that are much bigger than they are. Uh, I just wish I knew which tool was gonna be on that exam. I got it! You just stay right here! Grandpus! What? Um, on the exam, which tool are you gonna ask about? It's a secret. Uh, it's too bad. But I'm sure you can keep a secret, right? Of course. Then I'll tell you. Today's exam is on pliers, you see? You won't tell anyone, will you? Not a chance. Uh, I'll never pass it. You will! He's gonna ask about pliers. Huh? How could you know that? It's a secret. <laughs> okay, Digit. See if you can get the pliers out of there. A pair of pliers is a great tool indeed. To grab and turn things, it's the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use them. All your fingers, you could bruise them. Pliers are a great tool indeed. Good going. 
You got it. Thanks a lot, Dolik. It's not really me you should be thanking. <gasps> Krampus, thanks a lot. For what? The secret. What secret? About the pliers. Oh, that. You know, I picked a new topic. Um, I decided that a hammer will be the tool. A hammer? Only it's a secret. I remember. <laughs> the topic I changed. It's a hammer. You sure about that? Totally. All right. I'll try to do it. A hammer is a great tool indeed. To pound in nails, it is the tool that you need. Just be careful how... You're gonna pass. That's only if he asks me about a hammer. I'll be right back. <gasps> Krampus, it's a hammer for sure? Nah. A hammer would be way too easy for those kids. So now it is a drill. A drill? But only... It's a secret! <laughs> now I know. There's no doubt about it at all. It's a drill! <sighs> A drill is such a great tool indeed. To drill a hole, it is the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use it, or your finger, you could lose it. A drill is such a great tool indeed. And if it's not a drill, right. Hammers, wrenches, drills, screwdrivers, vices, mallets, saws, and pliers. All of these are super duper great tools, yes indeed. That's all. That's enough of this. I'll just go and take the exam. Yeah. Digit, come on in. Um, Professor, well, what do you want to ask me on today's exam? Nothing. You already passed. What? You mean you're not going to ask me anything at all? No need. You're excellent at getting tools out of a pack -a mat But how could you know that? That's a secret. And we Fixies sure know how to keep secrets. But if you need a Fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a Fixie, please don't let their secret out.